In this lesson, I'll show you how to generate an interactive unit circle that relates to the sine curve on GeoGebra. On your screen is a demonstration of what this app could look like after you're finished. And if you're teaching an introductory class on trigonometry, this app perfectly illustrates how the ratios produced by the terminal arm relate to the sine curve. On your screen, I've started a new file for GeoGebra, and you want to place a point at the center. Then I'll create a second point at 1 and 0. I want my unit circle to have a radius of 1. I'll zoom in there for clarity and I'll create a circle with a radius of 1 by connecting this point to that point. I want to create a terminal arm next so I'll place another point along here. I'll click this function called angle and connect C to A to B. Now notice that it gave me the outer angle, so what you can do, instead of going C, A, B, you can click B, A, C. In addition, I'll create a line segment that extends from A to C. There you go. Now let's see if we can move C around. Notice that as we move C around, we get angles ranging from 0 to 360 as expected. Now if you recall in the demonstration I showed you at the beginning, there was a vertical line that extended from point C to the x-axis. That vertical line was dashed. And I want to incorporate that next. To do this, what we want is a line segment that extends from point C to a point vertically below it connecting to the x-axis. This can be accomplished using this tool called a segment with a given length, except I'll input the code underneath because it's a lot easier that way. So type in segment, and our line segment is starting from point C. So type in C, and since we want a point along the x-axis that's vertically below it, we'll open up another set of parentheses, and we'll define that that point has the same x-coordinate as C. And its y-coordinate will be 0. You see this line that's just made? That was done with that code. Now we can modify it. We can modify it with a dashed line and by making it red. You may also remove the label, just for clarity's sake. Now that we're done with the unit circle and we're moving on to the sine curve, I want to go ahead and change the x-axis so that it reflects values that are in radians. And to do that, we will click this button, Advanced, Preferences, x-axis, and the distance will be in pi over 2 much better. Now I'll create a function for sine. So f of x is equal to sine x and we'll limit it between 0 and 2 pi. Except I'll go back and modify it and instead of having my limit from 0 to 2 pi, I'll have my limit between 0 and alpha. So that as I move this terminal arm along the unit circle, alpha dictates how much of the sine curve is shown. So I'll click this button, click alpha instead. And for some reason the terminal arm disappeared, so I'll go ahead and recreate that. There it is. Now it's called H, but we can always change that to something that is more reasonable. It's up to you. So watch this. As I move point C, the sine curve is generated based on the angle that's created there. Now if you recall, in the demonstration there was another point that was at the end of the sine curve. And as I moved C in that demonstration, that point being at the end of the sine curve 
was always at the front. And there was a vertical line much the same way as we have here that was dashed. We need to create that next. I'll start by placing a point along the sine curve. I'll call it D. And using the function dynamic coordinates, my point D will have the x coordinates based on the angle alpha and its y coordinates will be that of C. So I'll type in y bracket C and we get the following. We get this new point E. Notice that if I move C around, E will be moving along the curve. And of course you can remove the label off of D for clarity's sake. Now we need to create the same vertical line segment from E to the x-axis. So if you recall, it was segment, the point is E, and open up parentheses, its x-coordinate will be that of E, and its y-coordinate will be 0. Let's go ahead and stylize it the way we want. So again, dashed line, and it's red. Okay, so we're all done. Notice that as I move this around, the sine curve is generated dynamically. Now, of course, you can always remove some of these points. You don't need B. You don't need to show A. Nor do you need to show the label for C. And it just looks neater. And so there you have it. Now you know how to create a sine curve that grows dynamically based on the unit circle with a radius of 1. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below or use our website stated in the description. Thank you for watching.